Hello and welcome back to the Red and White Preview. Today, joining myself uh, from the Stacey West fanzine, uh, Lincoln City fan Gary Hutchinson. Gary, thanks so much for joining us. Um, how are you? Yeah, I'm very well, my friend. Thank you. How are you? Yeah, thanks, mate. I'm good. Uh, and from Sunderland again on here, we have Azza. Azza, you seem to be quite tired, but um, how are you really? Uh, I've got a bit of a favour. That's Wembley favour because we're going back on the AFL to win, to win the trophy. We, we, we better not be. I don't want to step up. I'm not doing that again. No, no. I'm not doing that again. Even, <laughs> even if it's ours this year, gents. It's our trophy this year. My clapham has got history with it. We're taking it again. <laughs> Do you know what, Gary? You can have it. Like honestly, I, I don't want to step foot in Wembley ever again. I don't want to see the Sunderland shirt in Wembley ever again. Um, to kick us off, uh, as a uh, last night, uh, just a quick word on it. Uh, I know it was only a cup game, but a good performance and a good result. Yeah, uh, I think there was times where things looked a bit a bit shaky. Um, you've got to put that down probably the change of the of the formation. The pitch looked very boggy and very heavy. Not great conditions. Um, not not great pitch size to be honest, but at the end of the day, the lads got the job done and showed great fight to come back from one 0 down, and that's kind of what I think the fans have been wanting. They've been wanting teams to, to go, get at teams. Fair enough, we go one 0 down, but I don't think many teams are going to try and attack us. Once they get one goal, they'll sit back, and I think we just want fans just want an attacking team, and that's what they got last night. Uh, I know they had about sixty two percent possession, to, uh, which showed we had the ball in about five hundred eighteen passes. So showed that there was a bit more instead of going long ball where probably not going to be more of an accurate, accurate pass. It was more quick breaking the lines, which was nice to see. Yeah, I mean one thing I've noticed under Lee Johnson already <clears throat> is we're a lot quicker going forward. We don't waste as much time and we don't play it out wide to bring it back in the middle to pass it through the middle to then pass it back to then pass it back out wide. We we seem to ha- have a, a, a way of attacking and we just go forward. Uh, Gary, uh, same question to yourself, really. I mean, a, a 4 1 win against Shrewsbury, you, you kind of have any complaints, surely? Yeah, good result, good game. Yeah, we were absolutely outstanding. Um, our reserve players uh, really stepped up to the plate. Remy Howard, Zach Elbazetti probably started one game apiece this season, and Zach Elbazetti was outstanding. He won't play on Saturday. Um, I mean, we were down to the bare bones. I think we named four on the bench, um, something like that. But we were just utterly ruthless. The last few games, we've been attacking at will. We've created chances. I think we had uh, eight shots in the first half, six on target, or 12 shots, eight on target. Um, but, I mean, Shrewsbury were poor. But, uh, yeah, it was reflective of the football that Michael's got us playing. We, you know, we're not really a work in progress anymore. We're moving towards his vision of, of what he wants us to be. Um, so uh, yeah, it's been really exciting. Nice to win. Yeah, you know, scoring goals is always great as well. So scoring four away from home is superb. I mean, hopefully Shrewsbury were rubbish because obviously they have got them uh, coming up. Uh, I mean, what's going right for Lincoln this season? Because I've got here, you're second in the table. You've won four out of your last five games. Um, I think the best defensive team in the league. Uh, if you had to pinpoint as, as to what's clicked this season, that maybe wasn't there last season. What is it? Dare I say everything? Um, I mean, Mike Clapton obviously came in last season and took over from Danny Cowley. And that's a really hard job to do because we'd had our most successful period in our history under Danny, three trophies in three years. Um, And he dismantled the team. And that's really, really brave. But it was an ageing team and it was a team put together probably with a with a high end League Two budget, which we couldn't sustain. Um, so Michael kind of he, he had a lot of rebuilding to do. So we did struggle towards the end of last season a little bit. He was it was you know I liken it to a workman trying to use another man's tools. Um, but this year Michael's been able to bring the players he wants in. Now bear in mind we've got this squad on forty percent less than we spent last season. Um, but some of his transfer business has been phenomenal, and it's been throughout the team as well. So rather than just picking up one or two decent players, he's picked up key players in all areas. Alex Palmer in goal is is you've got to start at the back. I think he's got nine clean sheets in the league, 10 in total, which is, the, as you say, the highest in the division. Uh, we've got a centre-half called Lewis Monsma, who I swear models himself on Dennis Burkamp. Um, he's been... He's what, juggled in, in the league <laughs> Yeah, man, he does. Honestly, he's juggled one of his goals against Blackpool. You can see him doing ball juggling before he lashes it in the back of the net. He's a centre-half. Um, he's fearless. He sprays 30-yard passes with, with ease and he moved from the Dutch second division. Um, and it's also the style of play as well. We play a possession-based football. We play out from the back. When things aren't going well, we stick to our principles because we know it works. We've had some great results. Um, I think only one team potentially has sussed us out this season, which was Bristol Rovers. That was really tough at home. 
But other than that, I think we've played some good sides. Charlton, um, Oxford, Blackpool are a decent side. And we've come out of all those tests. We've beaten Ipswich. Um, the only team I think were better than us this year are Portsmouth. So um, there's an awful lot going right at the moment. And it's early days. Uh, but I've got a sneaky feeling that we might just be like Luton from a couple of years ago and, and actually sustain a top six challenge, which would be un unreal for us. Yeah. Um, so out of that Bristol Rovers game, what, how do you think that they figured you out? Like, what, what did they do to figure out? Or, or what, what maybe did you do to make it a bit easier for them? I think, first of all, if, if we are trying to play our game and one or two players are having an off day, because of the way that we work, you, you can't carry it on nine men. It's a team game. Um, I mean, you know, our centre forward's often back defending. Every cog and every every person has a purpose. And I think there was one or two players that game that didn't have a, a, a wonderful game. Um, and Bristol Rovers were very direct. Um, it wasn't particularly pretty football. They were strong. They were well organised. Uh, they stopped the ball going through, um, um, like our, our commentator calls him a quarterback, which I hate because it's not America, but he kind of sits in that role dictating play. It's a word um, I use all Liam... the time. <laughs> yeah, well, it could be Liam Bridcott, who obviously you guys, I think, have seen before, um, if he's fit. It could be George Grant, who's got 10 goals as well. So if you kind of, if earlier stages, if you stop that player playing, our play perhaps hadn't developed enough that other people could fill in. Um, but I think now teams have, have done that a little bit. Accrington and Rochdale both sat really tight on it. Um, but all it was doing was stopping us and they still couldn't break us down as well. So, um, yeah, it, it's it's interesting. I think Gillingham and Northampton will be the two that we might come up against and, and face something a little bit different. I, I would be surprised if Northampton would have uh, put up any challenge like. Would, uh, we'll, we'll definitely get into your team uh, in, in a, bit, a bit more in detail uh, later on. Uh, as a... A player I want to ask you on, um, a player who I criticised heavily under Phil Parkinson, um, well, this season especially, is Max Power. Um, the game last Saturday, uh, I don't think Max, uh, unfortunately, I didn't get to watch the match last night because I wasn't expecting them to move it to a six o'clock kickoff. But um, so, what did you make of Power's performance, uh, his first game under Lee Johnson? He seemed to me to have a bit more of a free reign, and I think that's how you get the most out of him. Yeah, I think the problem with uh, with Max is being he's been in too many different roles in midfield. Sitting, I think when he first came in, he was getting forward a lot more, and he had that spell where I think he got two goals, and then he got a red card, and then he got another red card, and I think he just ended up sitting and back and got the back four, and another one, yeah, and he got a bit of a reputation of oh, the pick the pin the pin uh, point, uh, pinpointed him, and I think it went through a lot of changes. Like I remember in the semi final of the cup before Wembley, I think it was Bristol Rovers where he played just behind Wilder to try and get the best out of Greg. I don't think he's that type of player. He doesn't like his back towards goal. I, I still don't know where his best midfield role to play. Like, like Grant's going to sit, Ledbetter's going to sit right right in front of that back. He's going to, he's going to do that. He's a quarterback. Quarterback, quarterback role. Um, <laughs> I'll say that just for you, Gary. <laughs> um, I, you know, that's what Grant's going to give you. And, you know, there's probably nobody better than him in the league one doing that at the moment, especially getting the ball forward. Uh, Scoring is a box to box, dirty player. You know, he does all that stuff. He chip him with a goal here and there. I think. He's a bit more disciplined than Power in a better way. Uh, he's got a bit more of an engine. So I think he, the positives were there. He may have had a free roll, just get on the ball, get the, a bit further up, and he can. His, his, his benefits of playing there is he can look out for the likes of Jack Diamond because he, he needs runners. I think that's something he's missed. Gooch likes the ball to his feet, so does McGeady. And I think that's a problem where once the ball's given to him, I don't think Max knows what to do. Uh, with all due respect, he, he will know what to do, but he, maybe he's got reins on him, especially if we've had you know, two up top. He might just sit in. We we always we were always built to the three centimeters. We're always staying just put. And I think that's kind of bad for Max Power. I think he should just be kind of given not a free roll per se, but more of a license to go forward, get in that box, make the late runs, <clears throat> play the ball through. Likes of Diamond, who I think benefited from having power be, uh, in that midfield to play the ball through because Diamond was going to run all day, and you know he can hit them if a ball comes to the edge of the box. We've seen him time and time before. He's hit the ball and it, it's a rocket. He's, he's, he's capable of scoring a, a screamer or with a well hit goal. So <clears throat> I've not really been, I've, I've always liked Max Power, I've always rated them. <clears throat> Under Parkinson, I do think he was very poor at times. However, I think that did come under a bad spell where there wasn't really any standout players that probably far from Ledbetter, who was really pulling the strings and was getting a lot of praise. Yeah. But then you ask who else goes in there? Do you play a double pivot? Because I don't think he wants to change the formation. You know, last thing, last thing you probably want to do if it's working is change to a four-two-three-one. 
the 4-3-3. I, I don't trust Dobson in there. When he came on last night, I felt worried every time he got the ball. Absolutely shaky. Him and Flanagan are, are very risky after no, playing together. And I think when Willis... I think Flanagan thinks he's better than what he is on the ball. <laughs> but I think he not... was encouraged far too much in the part into the plough from the back, almost as if he was a Brazilian centre-half, like as opposed to him bringing the, the pretty standard square peg in the square hole, League One centre-back. I think he was encouraged yeah. far too much to take it out. I think that was the problem when Baldwin and him played. were both under Ross, were both like, encouraged to play out. And I think the reason Flanagan stayed and Baldwin went was because Flanagan used to pop with an odd goal like Portsmouth and Black. Blackpool ones maybe or maybe uh, Baldwin's got against Blackpool yeah Baldwin scored that, uh, sorry but Flanagan did pop with a few goals that really saved us more than Baldwin back back yeah and I think Baldwin was the better centre half and I was cla- I was clamming for us to get put in that team just for the fact we needed a no nonsense defender and that's what he was he was yeah he had a bad debut but then who was not going to have a bad debut moving from Turkey or Scotland wherever he came from moving your family Scotland. over and playing in a playing in a brand new family uh, a brand new team that had literally been built from scratch yeah. So I think when Willis is back, that will help Lee Johnson with the playing out, get the ball forward because Willis is quite comfortable on the ball. Yeah, hundred uh, percent. So I mean, he, right. he was playing as, as, a, as a right winger almost at times last season, like when we had that great run in uh, January. That like Chris Basham for Sheffield United reminded us a little bit. Mm. He's like gets our ball, and O'Connell he does the same. So I think Power may have a, a resurgence in this team now. I really hope so. I think we might need to get rid of. I don't say we get rid of Dobson, but we might need another centre mid and all. Just so that I know we've got four, but I feel like we're missing something in there at the moment. Just someone who is a bit more attacking, who can get a bit of box to box. Maybe Diamond can play there. Who knows? Uh, but for now, I, I think his best three are going to be scoring Power and Grant Ledbetter. There's a lot of, there's a few people who'll know. Uh, I am the fa- current, the founder and the current only member of the George Jobson Defence League. Um, out of the two between Dobson and Scowen, does Scowen get in ahead of you? Because for me, Scowen, he does seem to bring, all Scowen seems to bring is energy. And I, I feel as if Dobson brings that, but Dobson also defensively is quite sound. He can win the ball a lot. He, he can distribute it to other players. I just, I don't say that with Scowen. I, I think he's a bit of a headless chicken going forward, mate. And there's been a lot of times he's got in and around the box and the, the balls just went flying into Rose head. Whereas I feel as if with Dobson, he, he kind of ignores his limits and he doesn't he doesn't test them. I think that's a fair assessment, to be honest. Uh, I just think Dobson is also going to a big mistake in him as well. I don't think Scone does. You've seen it a few times where he, go, he goes in for some silly challenges. Uh, it's the opening day of the season, and I think that has affected him because I think under Ross, when he first started playing, he was he was really he was really good. He was our best midfielder, and I was a big fan of Dobson. And then I don't know what's happened. Maybe he was the player in the back in the well when Grant obviously when Ledbetter went off and kind of had some, some time away I think he took on that role and that he was stepped up in, immensely well it was going to be January it's always going to be hard yeah. it's always going to be hard everyone says you know oh, Grant Ledbetter cannot run he's a bit slow yeah but to tell you That's what there's fine. no one better on the ball in League One like there, there is not <clears throat> but uh, Dobson again I think they'll get his fair, a fair chance I don't like see, I'm willing to give everyone a, a chance and see what they're going to do because We've seen the best of Dobson and the worst of Dobson, as we have with Grant Ledbetter and Max Power and, and well, maybe not the worst of Scorn. But we haven't seen anything that's lit the, lit, us, lit the world on fire with Scorn. So I do think that the four centre mids in League One are good centre mids, but I don't think we've got that that extra something in midfield. Yeah. Um, I think they're also different as well. Yeah, they're very different, but similar. I, I can't, I can't, that's the best way I can, I can they're describe all, They're it. all quite slow and sluggish. I don't think any of the, like, I don't think any of them's got, like, immense pace. Obviously, Ledbetter, we know, I mean, Ledbetter is a quality player, and for me, he gets in as the quarterback every week. I'm just going to keep saying that. Um, <laughs> and I, I think with power, as much as I have slated him this season in particular, I think when, when he goes forward and he's just not restrained, as Jay Whittle, who uh, is a, a podcast in the Wigan fan, had near said, um, power, when, when you give him free rate to go forward and create, He's, he's a havoc for, for defences and there's so many other League One fans who I've spoke to on here and, and, and not on here who say we would love to have Max Power in our team. Um, and then I think with, with Scowen and Dobson, you, you're looking at the best of a bad bunch. I mean, I think Dobson's criminally underrated. I think he offers you a lot of energy. I think he offers you a, a real um, security defensively. Um, and as I say, I think he stepped up really well about January last season, December, January, February last season, uh, when Ledbetter had to take his time out. And I just think this season something hasn't quite clicked for him. Uh, Gary, I, I want to ask you, so 
Yeah, you mentioned about how you're playing with a quarterback. Um, would it be a four-one-four-one <clears throat> or something similar to that you'd be playing? Probably a four-three-three, um, more than likely. So, you know, formations are, are are probably overrated these days because of the way that you know football develops so quickly. It's a four-three-three, but it can quickly become a a kind of a a four-two-four almost with the two wide players coming forward. If you play a four-two-three-one, how's that different to a four-three-three when you defend it? So, <coughs> um, tends to be uh, Liam Bridcut sat in front of the back four. If he's fit, he's kind of you know in how's and out. Been, how's he been doing? I was going to ask you Liam that. Uh, I, you know what? I really like him. Um, he's brilliant around the ground. Um, he's a top captain. He raises standards. On the field, he probably hasn't hit heights yet. He started the season injured, came back, picked up another injury, came back for two Ooh. games. Now he's out again. So, you know, Liam Bridcut, you're never going to get 35 games a season out of him. I don't think that's, I think that's just the way it is. Um but it's the influence that he has, I think, on the younger players. We've got young Robbie Gotts on loan from Leeds, who um, I interviewed him the other week. And he said, just Liam Bridcut walks in a room and he's been at Leeds, he's been at Sunderland, he's been at Chelsea, he's been at, and I'm not saying it's just right. come on your podcast, he's been at big clubs. And that kind oh, of commands respect. You're getting back on, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> You know, in all seriousness, Sunderland, I was chatting to my mate the other day, biggest club outside the Premier League, in our opinion, and that uh, ahead of anyone in the Championship. And when a player's played at that level for those clubs, um, it commands respect. So when we borrow these Premier League youngsters, when we borrow the Robbie Gotts, the Alex Palmers, the Callum Mortons, they get more respect from a player like that than, let's say, Michael Boswick last season was a monster for us. That he came through the non-league, played for Stevenage. So lad comes from Leeds, who's lived his entire life, but under the likes of Bielsa and playing with with you know top class players. And suddenly the guy he's got to look up to, he, he's a he's a lower league kind of enforcer. It doesn't quite have the same ring to it. So I think that's probably what more what Liam Bridcut brings than anything. Um, but back to the formation, quite right for four three three. So Bridcut and then normally two attacking midfielders. It, it's really fluid. So it could be George Grant, it could be James Jones. That's probably the the ideal trio. If Bridcut's not fit, Jones plays quarterback. Um, Conor McGrandles will then go probably in the attacking midfield. But we've got Gotts who can play there. We've got Theo Eden who can play there. Brennan Johnson played there last night on loan from Forest. He's superb. Just to touch on your conversation as well, I actually write um, about kind of League One, League Two football as well. And I fall squarely on the uh, George Thompson is a fantastic player when he's yes. uh, when he played in the right position. And of I was looking at your squad before um, before I came on earlier, and George Dobson's one of the few players that I'd look at and go, actually, if Michael Apton got his hands on him, it, and given Michael's coaching and ethos, I think he'd turn him back into the the player that he was potentially going to be when he was at West Ham. I think with Dobson, I feel as if. Now his confidence is so low because he gets slated by so many. I don't know what it is, but as soon as he came through the door, Sunderland, it was ri- it was written in the stars that he was going to get slated by the fans. He never he never really got given a chance to me to actually get a good run in the team and, and get some games under his belt. Because as soon as he makes a mistake, the fans get on his back. And I think we've got certain players. For me, Charlie White's one in particular, who as much as I respect White's effort and I actually like to actually re- you know rate him to a degree. I feel as if he can make a lot of mistakes, but the fans don't get any back. Whereas you look at a player like Dobson, who puts 100%, as White does, puts 100% in every week, mm. makes the odd mistake, but he gets slated for it. I'm just wondering, maybe his, his confidence has been knocked from the way he's been slated with the fans and him kind of being dropped in and out of the team. He, he, he does look very nervy to me when, when he's playing um, lately. Um, so obviously you're playing with a, a, a 4-3-3. Um, what kind of tactics can we expect? Are you playing along the floor? Well, you, you mentioned you're playing out from the back, playing along the floor. Is high intense target man. What, what what can we expect? Play out from the back. Stick to our principles. If there's no gaps going forward, we'll go back, go across and start again. It sounds painstaking, but it really isn't. Um, as soon as we see a gap, we'll attack it with pace. We've got real pace as well um, throughout the team. So, I mean, Zach Elbazetti last night, who hasn't been starting, was so rapid. that He, he, he looked like an Olympic runner. He left the Shrewsbury defence for dead. Um, Harry Anderson is what I would class as an old school winger in that he's, he's bulky and he'll battle. You know, he, he, if he gets a knock, he'll fight back. Um, and he's more of a battering round. Brennan Johnson will surge forward with pace as well. So we'll look to get those players on the ball. We will look to get runners um, on opposite flanks and then switch it. So lots of 30-yard balls cross field, usually coming from the centre-backs. Um, certainly uh, Lewis Monson. We've got TJ Omer on loan from Spurs, who is equally as adept at that. Yeah, I've heard so, of him, yeah. 
he's, uh, there isn't any kind of one solid pattern. It will always go out from the back on the deck. Very, very rare will go long to Tom Hopper, but we have that opportunity if, if, if we need to, if things aren't quite going our way. Um, but we do certainly stick to our principles. Love an attacking down the flank. We love an overlapping fullback. We don't really have um, first choice fullbacks. We've got Max Marlborn who can play left back, but he also plays centre back. Sean Rowan is a 16 year old centre back who's been playing left back. Teo Eden is a midfielder who plays left back. On the other mm-hmm. flank, we've got TJ Omer who's a centre back playing right back. We've got Teo Eden, uh, not Teo Eden, Robbie Gotts, sorry. So we've got this kind of real fluidity. So we've got a relatively small squad, but we've probably got more options than a team like Shrewsbury that have got 32 players because all of our players can play in two or three positions. And you can look at our starting 11 and actually not know who's playing where. Is Harry Anderson right wing back or is he playing right back? Is Brennan Johnson 9, 10 playing out wide? Where's Anthony? So, you know, it's really hard for other teams to kind of manage against. But what's really important is whenever we change things, the pattern remains the same. So yesterday, we made six changes to the team that won at Rochdale. We entirely changed the forward line. We changed both of the centre halves, and yet the patterns of play were identical to Ro- uh, Rochdale. The way that we attacked was identical. So there's a real consistency through the side as well. And look, we're Lincoln City. We're forty percent budget less than last year. So yeah, we're not world beaters. I understand that, and so do the uh, so does the manager. I think he understands the players' limitations. Um, but I don't know. There's a real togetherness as well, and it's um, it's a great time to be a Lincoln fan. And it's the best football I've ever seen Lincoln City play, um, certainly on the deck, attractive to the eye, chances being created. Uh, so, yeah, hopefully, hopefully, it should be a good game. Uh, Must be nice. Yeah. <laughs> um, Touching on your comment there when you said uh, players, you can look at the team sheet and not know who's playing where. I feel as if we can relate to that a bit as a when, uh, but in a negative way, uh, with Parkinson as manager, and his ability to somehow find uh, left centre backs out of players who've just got nothing, no experience at the back in their life, uh, just to keep a three at the back. Uh, Guy, do you do you think at all you could be at risk of being figured out if you you use the word identical there to describe your patterns of play? I think we had this, we were the same. Um, late December, January, early February last season, we, we were kind of the same where we were playing identical football every week. Um, and it was working. I mean, we beat you 3 1, um, which, of course, I'll I, I, I love to remind you. Uh, we beat Wickham 4 0. Um, Tommy, we beat them one. We went on a, a crazy run. We scored loads of goals, kept playing treats. But if you just play that football every week, you as a fan, a bit concerned that it might get figured out. Possibly. Uh, just to touch on that 3 1, we did give you two, a two goal head start in that game. Yeah, in to... all fairness. Um, and, you know, also, you do owe us one because we beat you and got uh, Jack Ross the sack as well. So, um, we expect you. Some yeah, cheers for that. It was, it was a good favour. <laughs> Is that um, what the two goals were for? <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, they were they were a real <laughs> gift. That, that was that was defenders trying to play out from the back. It were basically got shovels for feet. I think it was Jason Shackle trying to play oh. out from the back. Oh, <laughs> He's about forty. I remember Great. that one. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, um, but back to the question. To a degree, there's always a fear of that. I mean, I always I think back to um, 2006, seven season, a long while ago now, but we were scintillating for six months, top of the league, looking like promotion, and then everyone figured us out, stopped us, and we ended up falling <clears> to seven. <throat> and I'm not so sure about this because when I say identical football, we're playing the same sort of patterns, but because the players that can play in different positions have certain strengths, like I said with Harry Anderson, um, because he's an old school winger, so he. He's never going to be beating you with tricks. He'll beat you with pace, look to go inside, go outside, but he's big and strong and a fullback can't knock him off. So if we get into that channel and he's up against a fullback that's kind of stronger than him, then brilliant. We'll swap him over somewhere and we'll bring Brennan Johnson out. Now he's got guile, he's got pace. So all of a sudden it's a different prospect for the fullback. And they swap over, the wing. The uh, wingers will swap regularly during the game. If we're not getting any joy, let's say you, you mentioned earlier that your midfield has got quite a, a slow kind of feel to it with respect. Yeah. So if we're in a game where we think yes, the, the, the midfielder are slower, then we'll look probably to get the ball forward to our midfielders. And rather than then looking for the passes, we'll actually look to use a bit of pace to move through the thirds. So although it's very much the same patterns when it works, I think that we're all so adaptable. And there's been very, very few games where I've sat here and think there's nothing in this for us at all. Um, and it has been hard at times. Chance creation has been um, has been a problem, and it, it might not look it when you see the, the wins that we've had: five nil at Bradford, six two Forest Green, four one the other night. There's been games where we've scored a lot of goals, 
prior to the last two games, I think we'd scored five in seven or something like that. Two of those being penalties, one from a corner, one that was gifted to us by Swindon. So my only worry it isn't actually being found out because I think I think in this day and age, clubs know what you're all about after a couple of games. They have analysts sat on Y Scout watching full games. So you kind of found out three wins into the season. I think my worry is just purely that we're doing the right things and we don't get the right end product, which we saw with, with the lack of goals. But, you know, the, the good teams do the same things all the time and nobody can stop them anyway. So fingers crossed that's how we can carry on. Yeah, I think you always need a contingency um, there. And for me, one thing we've lacked this season is an individual uh, and, and a plan B. And when we when our tactic of playing it out wide and looking to cross it into the box into a target man hasn't worked, We've persisted with that. I know you're saying that one of your strengths is that you stick to your guns, but with us, it really hasn't been a strength because there's been times where we've scored one goal and we haven't even scored in the game and we're chasing the game and it's just crying out for someone a bit different, uh, which is where, of course, um, the outcry for bringing McGeady back came in. Uh, as a When he came back in uh, against Wigan, I know it was only Wigan, <laughs> one thing that really surprised me was how match fit he seemed and, and how he just seemed... Uh, Slot it slot into the team. So well, he didn't do anything outrageously brilliant, but he didn't seem to be off the pace at all, and that really surprised me when you consider he hasn't played a game, game of football in about six months. I thought he was injured. I thought that was the rumor going around. That Parkinson said so. That was a load, and I'm sure he said he. I'm positive he said he had an injury. And then a week later, he's in the squad. I'm sorry, but you either say it's a minor injury if it's something like that. You don't say it's an injury. I thought I really it was- don't. Problems with his uh, registration, where so, he wasn't going to be allowed to play until January or something because of. He tweeted, he tweeted saying he was registered. Because I, I remember saying on the, I think the wrote where a part, I just had the full list, um, which is always good because I always wonder who some of the names are because they said the middle name comes up and like, who was that? You got oh, the last was it, wasn't Jordan Willis's like <clears throat> Barra Club or something really weird like that? <laughs> I think it was something like that. Um, I did have a gig like that, but yeah, he was definitely registered. He's always been. Um, so I don't know what, why. I, I, Say there was a lot of rumors come around at the time, and we were doing well. And I don't, there was a lot of people, there was a few people who were on the yeah, let's get them back in, but nobody complained straight away. Nobody did because, <clears throat> same with what I was going to say about Dobson is Dobson was, was it was pointed the finger was pointed to Dobson because of Jack Ross bought him in. When things started going wrong, and looked on who did Jack Ross bring in this then because we didn't get Marcus Madison, he got the finger pointed him. That's what I'm that's that was my theory on it anyway. Everyone wanted Marcus Madison. And we got George Dobson, and I think everyone was just like, "Wait, well, that's not Marcus Madison. You're Jack Ross's sign, and Jack Ross loved him. Jack Ross praised him so much. I think that did not help him at all. Uh, same as when kind of Luke O'Nine come in, and he didn't get a game straight away. The mm. opposite happened with Dobson. He got thrown straight in. So maybe he could have took the O'Nine approach, you know, give him a bit of time with Dobson, with Dobson that was, <clears throat> instead of just throwing him in. Because I think he did get a bit of stick just for the fact that he was a Jack Ross player, shall we say. Jack Ross did and, and I think very high. fans were starting to turn on Jack Ross at that time as well. <clears throat> yeah. So, but going back to the McGeady, I, it, I, the thing I had noticed about him, and he only came on mainly last night, was he didn't do as much as he used to in the Jack Ross. I don't know if that's because with Jack Ross, it was a bit side to side. There was Everything was relying on him. Yeah. Uh, he, put a, he put a few crosses in last night, and the one great crosses, but you know what? There was something different. And I just looked and thought, he got the ball. I think the first thing he did was put through someone's legs or just knock around someone. Just a bit of a trickery. And I just like, it made us laugh. Because it's one of the, oh, look at this. Put through Even though it's all them, I shouldn't get excited. But it was just a bit shocked to see something like that. Yeah, we we, got, we, we, at we least, used to it this season. <clears throat> the, least, the one thing I like to, I, I want to compare to was Gooch, who tries to do it. When Gooch first came into the team, he was very direct. I think he tries to be McGeady. Because he stops the ball, he has to... But he hasn't got no directness. I think he tried. I think he struggled with decisiveness initially, but I think he's got a lot more experience as a player and he's a lot better for it now. I think he just needs to be a bit more direct. I think Parkinson didn't get the best out of him. I'm looking forward to seeing Gooch back on the side with, you know, that license to go forward. So, McGeady on one side and Gooch on the other really does have sort of a bit of attack and flair to it. Um, with also Diamond in there, Maguire, who could probably play on either side. You could play, you could. He wants to change formation to four, two, three, one. He can play McGeady and Nintendo or Maguire. Them three should be have license to interchange, which I think yeah. McGeady Maguire really 100%. do need. And I think Gooch likes to go on the left, but when McGeady's there, he maybe sometimes doesn't, you know, it's McGeady's always going to get the, the say probably is because he's an experienced player, and let's face it, it's McGeady, he's, he's, our, he's the best, he's our best player. So I'm, I'm glad to see like, him back. I really without am. a shadow of a doubt as well. 
<clears throat> but I just can't, I don't want people to put all the pressure on McGeady again. We cannot just rely on McGeady. Just like we haven't got a plan, we didn't have a plan being a Parkinson. We can't just rely on the ball getting put in the box. We can't just rely on McGeady to pull out some magic every week. It's not going to happen. Somewhat like I say, like we said, like Gary said, you know, repetitive. If you might get caught out, which we will. You know, one day he's going to have he's going to have an off game. It just happens. So we'll double up on him. We'll do it. We can't just rely on McGeady. He's got to be part of the team. Bag. Oh, he's got to be. Of course, he has to be. No, no. What I mean is, like, he's got to work in cohesion with what the rest oh, of the yes, team's absolutely. doing. Not, not just like, right. We've got uh, ten players and then Aiden McGee. Whereas I feel as if yeah. that's how we're playing under Jack Ross. Yeah, absolutely. But if you look at, uh, at, at last night, there was a I think it was a moment where someone lost the ball and McGee sprinted a good 20, 30 yards. May not sound like that much, but it was a counter attack, and he got back before McFadden. Uh, I, I can't. I think that's how I pronounce his name. Commentator says a bit a different. But he sprinted and he made a tackle. Fantastic tackle. Something that McGrady does get criticised for is his work rate. But I think he's, he's shown that he's got to, he's, he's, he's willing to work on the team. He said that. I think he's got a point to prove. If we get promoted this season, you know, as I touch wood, uh, <clears throat> he can then look and go, like, this could have happened last season if you played me. You can't, like, you've got, everyone has to agree that if we played McGee when Potter didn't come in, we wouldn't have lost, we wouldn't have dropped two points. I think it was two points I think we needed. Or, it was against Gillingham, wasn't it? We wouldn't have dropped. We would have been two points better off. Let's face it, we would have, and we would have yeah. been up in the playoffs. And you've seen why he's like in the big occasions, uh, the Portsmouth one, where the, you know, the two goals. That man is just brilliant for League One, and you know you're fitting. He did well at Charlton the Championship. I don't think his heart was in it, but you know after you've just been kicked out of a club that you've signed, you took a pay cut for, and you've you've played there for a while. You know the fans loved you. you, you probably heart's not going to be in it moving to London. I think I think you need runners off him. Grig looked bright last night. I do have to say, he still he needs a goal to come out. He needs a Danny Graham goal against Everton, like off his backside. Go in. We, we say that we say that, but he, he's had his goals. <clears throat> I don't think he, he needs a run. He needs he just needs a bit. Look, look at the, the Maguire goal last night. We we had numbers in the box and we pounced on mistakes, and that's something that's been happening to us where we make mistakes, we get punished. Everyone sits back. I don't know that that ball must have went past two defenders last night. What wasn't a great ball from. Well, it was, was a good ball in the end from Diamond. But it was, it was that good, it was bad. And, you know, our final product wasn't great, but it was enough on there to get something. Look, led, but his cross for scoring. It was in with a bit of pace. And it, a free kick, some corners went back post, some went front post, some were low, some were high. Mixing it up. Nice to see, you know, scoring. How tall is he? He's not that tall. He's, he, he won the header because the ball was in direct and it was quick. It was a nice ball in. Put it on the keeper, see what he can do. You know, they're, they're having a terrible time, all them are. Why can't like let's pile the pressure on? That's what we should be doing. Yeah, let's, I, see, what, I, I, let's I was, see what these defenders can do. Yeah, I was I was really glad to see Scowling <laughs> off the set pieces. To be honest, I I kind of see why um, he's, he's he's been allowed to take the corners and, and the free kicks when we've got Maguire and Leppard to the two players who I'll are tell you why exceptional. The, go on, go on. You tell us why assists, the three assists that he got against Aston Villa under twenty ones. Oh, and one eight nil. Yeah, that's the only reason he was on. All you had to do was put it in the middle and Charlie White was out jumping 20-year-olds. 20, 20 yeah. Like, come on. If you're a professional footballer, you should be like, out jumping the kids that are playing for Aston Villa. No disrespect to Aston Villa's kids. You know, I say kids opposed to about my age. But, right, exactly. <clears throat> like, our age. And that's a thing, like, fair enough. Right? We, he got three assists. But, is he really our best set pace taker? Absolutely not. Ledbetter, Maguire, McGeady. That, that's the first thing that come to mind. Power, four. We've got yeah. some good set pace takers in there, enough to mix it up. Uh, Embleton, I think, Probably, I yeah. think he'd want to hire. He'd want to hire. He's a uh, hat in there. So, in terms of that, there's five players I can count who can put the ball in the box. Mm-hmm. So we should have to Scott. be better than Scowen. And if he wants to be the sixth player, he can be the sixth player to take them. That's fine. He very rarely will need it. Yeah. So I, I do think that maybe they've looked at it, and that's the the corners were always high and lofted. That's that's League One defenders' bread and butter. Probably not. I was I was uh, I was defenders sometimes, but they want that in the ball. If the ball's quick and, p- and pace and people are running off them, that's going to give defenders nightmares. Whether in League One, anything in the air where it can be a bit busty, uh, a bit a bruiser, and just grab a hold of someone, that's fine. That'll, that they'll do that all day. So I I do like to think we can change it up a little bit with Grant Ned, but uh, McGeady coming in, you know, Maguire's always going to have have something to say on, on set pieces. Gooch as well. I think he likes to get him, get himself involved in that. So hopefully. That's the start of something because we did get a bit better on set defending set pieces. I want to see us score some set pieces now. Let's have some routines and 
I do think Lee Johnson can get this out. He looks like a manager who is willing to try things. And I've seen, I think it was a uh, few games, I can't remember which game it was now actually, where they did two set piece, three set pieces in the world. exact same set piece across the floor. Yeah, uh, yeah. under Parkinson were very rigid and did the same things over and over again, yeah. And we were getting caught out and I think Lee Johnson, the difference massively is just the way they talk to the press. That should be your first thing. 100%. Parkinson, well, you know, just like, you know, we, we did well today in certain areas. Like, look at the guy. And now Lee Johnson stands up straight, he smiles and he just talks and he's direct. He, you know, he doesn't avoid any questions. Parkinson. <laughs> he's so <laughs> honest with himself and his team. I went I went back and watched his... Um, funny enough, it popped up on me recommended on YouTube. I went back and watched Lee Johnson's um, post-match uh, interview when we uh, when we drew 3-3 down at Bristol City. Um, uh, I'm going to use a word foreign to Gary here in the championship. Um and, uh, and and he he took 100% responsibility and, and he just he understood and he, he actually said over and over again like oh this is my responsibility if I've done this I've done, done that differently um, we are running uh, ever so slightly out of time so we are just going to get on to the predictions uh, Gary I'm going to go to you first uh, prediction for the game uh, I think it'll be a draw you've not lost away all season we've not drawn at home all season um, so yeah I, I, I think 1-1 one, one. Oh, better not be another 1-1 one, one. I'm absolutely sick of 1-1 I guess been our last three league games or something. Uh, Asa? Brian says 1 1, but my heart says 2 1 Sunderland. So we'll, I'll change it up from Gary and I'll say 2 1. I tell you what, I'm going to be confident. Uh, Rate Lee Johnson, I think he's uh, we'll already seen improvements in the team. I think he's going to have a few more days to work with the lads. This is going to be when Lincoln starts slipping. It's going to be Lincoln City nil, Sunderland 1. Uh, mm. I'd like to thank you sp- uh, both for coming on. Uh, as a, and Gary, two great guests. Uh, it'll be great to have you both on the review show for Connell. We'll, we'll, we'll see if we can do that. Uh, thank you to everyone watching as well. If you have, if you have liked the video, uh, please like it and share it and everything like that. It, uh, it does really help. Uh, consider subscribing if you like this type of thing. Uh, and we'll see you later.